So uh, hello everyone and welcome. Um, we are really honored and um, really happy to have you all here today. I'm going to start by introducing myself. Uh, my name is uh, Farah Saad. I am uh, a senior applied linguistics student and the president of the uh, Digital Literary Club. Uh, this is our second session for the movie, uh, digital movie production uh, competition, inshallah. So I hope you guys benefit from this session because this is a very special one. Uh, today we have a very special guest, uh, uh, guest uh, Ms. Amani al Khayyat. Uh, Ms. Amani is uh, a doctoral candidate in the Instructional Technology and Media Program uh, at Teachers College, Columbia University. Uh, her research interests include uh, conversational agents, uh, XR for education, immersive st storytelling, intelligent NFTs, and uh, decentralized uh, autonomous uh, organizations. Uh, she founded the Virtual Tell Conference at New York State uh, Tessel in uh, 2021, bringing together educators, practitioners, researchers, and passionate enthusiasts to work together and to integrate emerging technologies into education. Uh, she's also uh, the Social Event Committee Chair at the Immersive Learning Research Network Conference, and uh, she moderates and hosts training workshops in different VR pro uh, platforms. Um, so Amani, I would like to extend special thanks to you. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Farah. It's uh, a great pleasure to be here uh, at PSU. And um, I've taught uh, for five years at PSU from 2009 to 2014, and I wish to bring my experience <laughs> to the U.S. because um, it's like it was the best experience ever. Uh, faculty, students, uh, and higher management, everybody was supportive. It, it was my, I felt like PSU was my family. So thank you so much for having me today. And um, I'd, I'd like uh, from everyone, and I'm going to also post the instructions on the in-call messages, um, to share in the in-call messages any experience you've had with VR platforms, whether using a head-mounted display like Oculus or your PC. So if you never had any experience, you can just type never had any experience in VR. Also, some experiences like Second Life, OpenSim, uh, and other WebXR platforms like, um, yeah, that can be on PC and head-mounted display as well. Uh, yeah, you're most welcome to share your experience uh, because you, we always say that um, Second Life is the old metaverse and an open sim. So please share your experiences if you ever had any experience in VR um, until I share my, my screen. Let me just... So I won't be able to go back and forth, but I hope uh, you can hear me, right? Can you hear me okay? Yes, yes. yes. Yeah, okay. Yes, perfectly. Yeah, please, please type also what, what are these platforms? Oh, I think I didn't try that. <laughs> yeah, please, please type the names of the platforms and what was your experience. Yeah. So uh, today, the workshop, I know that you know a lot about uh, storytelling, so I wouldn't go uh, deeply into this uh, because that's not enough for like one hour. But uh, we're going to like touch upon some topics in terms of storytelling and then um, show you some uh, very famous uh, VR uh, movies and also immersive theater in, in VR. And uh, at the same uh, at the same time, we're gonna do an experiment. So I'm gonna have you interact with a VR uh, platform. Uh, we don't have the actors, so it's just um, a VR platform that's very simple. We're gonna interact with it, and then we're gonna teleport to another 
a VR platform where you create your own experience. So today is some kind of a hands-on experience <clears throat> because it's very, very, uh, it's so easy. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, so today we're going to talk about the use of VR in immersive filmmaking and storytelling. And before I start talking about it, every, like, you know, in every um, workshop, uh, people always like try to explain what is VR and what is XR, because the X XR is the big umbrella. And then what it, this big umbrella, it's inside a continuum. So um, we start with the real environment. It's the real environment that we live in. And then uh, augmented reality. And so augmented reality, if you ever played um games like pokemon go or wizards unite or even you can on your iphones um you can just type cat 3d and then it will show you um a link and then you go to this link and then you will you will uh, click on augmented reality even um instagram filters these are ar okay augmented reality so you see things that they are actually not present in, in, in your real environment, okay? But you are in the real environment. And so uh, this is augmented reality. And then it ends with the virtual environment, which is virtual uh, reality. And in virtual reality, um, so uh, in virtual reality, it's immersive and you wear uh, the headset and you kind of transfer it to another world. And, and so you meet people, you can actually see them, you can actually interact with them. Of course, you interact with their avatars, but also uh, there are uh, many technologies in which you can bring a person uh, in 3D, like Engage VR, in which you can see that person in 3D inside a virtual in environment, okay? And so mixed reality is like a combination between augmented reality or the real environment and the virtual environment. So you bring both environments together. And so the area between the two extremes, so that we have the real and we have the virtual are mixed and it's called mi mixed reality. And uh, there are some examples, as I said before, Instagram filters, Pokemon Go, Wizards Unite. It's really interesting that you're actually going about in your, let's say in your house, and then you're trying to find the confoundables in Wizards Unite. And wh while you're, sa you're saving the lives of these people, they can actually walking or uh, standing through your phone on your bed or on your sofa. And it's, it's really interesting to see something like that in, in your place. So it's kind of a mix between the, the physical and the virtual, the real and the virtual. And so VR, as I said before, it's these are immersive environments and uh, it amplifies presence, perception and manipulation. And this is very important because there has been an argument in filmmaking about, okay, is it presence or agency? And we're gonna see uh, in a while. So presence means that you are there and you feel that you are inside the movie and you are, look, you are actually, uh, let's say in the hero's uh, shoes, you are looking at things and they're actually, uh, there have been 360 degree uh, movies that have been created over uh, certain uh, problems that have taken place in the past, uh, like killing of a Mexican uh, boy uh, on the borders between America and, the, and Mexico. And uh, in this movie, uh, you stand uh, in place of the viewers and then you look at the borders and you see that the, the, the wall is very high, that no way this, this boy can ever throw rocks at the, at the, at the patrol. So, uh, so that's why uh, many people usually say that VR is the empathy machine. And so instead of watching a movie in which you empathize, you become uh, one of the elements of the movie in which you explore the area and you explore the space and then the, they, they sometimes put you in the in the heroes in the hero's shoes and they put they actually put you or put some hurdle, hurdles and they show you how this person was trying to conquer these these um, 
these hurdles. Perception. Um, so sometimes our perception, even in, in, in movies, the regular movies that we watch in the cinema, uh, they could be different. But also in VR, it depends on your position. It depends on your... Uh, on uh, like um, you know how you look at the characters um, it, it depends so uh, in some movies that I'm going to show you some uh, videos of uh, so in um, uh, in uh, severance th uh, theory welcome to respite uh, this was uh, an immersive theater in VR chat and you actually go inside the house and you follow Alex so Alex is a boy he has some kind of um, a, a psychological problem. I don't remember now. It's identity dissociation. Yeah, it's identity dissociation problem, and it's not that you're only that you're only watching. You're actually inside VR chat. You click on something. Okay, you have those hand trackers. Okay, you're wearing the Oculus or Oculus Rift, and then with the hand trackers, the um, the movie uh, organizers, they ask you to click on something and then you disappear so that you can go inside that house. You only watch the actors and then you do not only watch the actors. You, there are bubbles where you see and, um, and read the memories of Alex so that you can also interpret uh, what, what's going on in that, in that immersive theater. And so um, perception is also... Uh, different in VR, so uh, there are also movies where you actually the work, the movie can change in terms of uh, gaze. So uh, it tracks your eye. There's eye tracking, and then uh, it depends on where you're looking. So there might be something different that happens. Manipulation is also <laughs> really interesting in VR. So there has been some um, experiments in VR in terms of they actually have you wear the Oculus and then you put your hand on something and then you can see that your hand in VR, so wh wherever you place your hand, uh, you see it in VR as well. So your, your, your physical hand and your virtual hand in VR. And then all of a sudden somebody has a hammer and then they uh, kind of beat your your hands, and then people in real life they actually removed their uh, their physical hands. Although it's it was the virtual hand that was beaten in in VR, and it really happens if you are in VR playing some games. So there are some games we are where you are in a virtual world first. You meet people; these are not real people, and then if you if you are in a, in a certain position in the game. You might be, have somebody in front of you, and it's really, it's really real. Um, it, you you feel it real, okay? And um, so one of the things that I'd like to distinguish in terms of VR that also there are platforms that that works on PC. So we call them Web XR, and so uh, so there are platforms uh, that are on uh, on PC like Mozilla Hubs, for example. And so Mozilla Hubs, you can use VR or you can use WebXR. So some people who can't, who don't want to buy a VR uh, headset, so they can just go and hang out with friends. It's uh, it's similar to Second Life, but in VR, the difference is the first person experience. So if you played Second Life before, or if you were on Second Life before, you always see your your avatar. In VR. Uh, the, 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 the concept itself is about your own experience. You are the avatar, so it is a first-person experience, okay? And some platforms like Tivoli uh, Cloud VR, for example, they, they, they actually give you options. So second, first, second, or third-person experience. So VR provides a fully immersive experience, and you're not only an audience experiencing the story from the outside, it means that you are in many ways cut off from reality and become part of the story. So we're going to watch some uh, experiences in VR. One of the best experiences, it's free on Oculus, it's called Notes on Blindness. So it was a guy who uh, wrote a diary. Um, he had, um, he wasn't blind, he wasn't that blind at first. He, he, 
who was suffering from some vision imp impairment. And then he wants to show us how he see in VR. So you actually, when you wear the Oculus, you start looking uh, into the world through this person's eyes. Um, uh, Wolves in the Walls um, was actually one of the best. It's my favorite uh, VR movie. And uh, Wolves in the Walls is, um, is a movie that on, that also did not tackle presence, it tackled agency in, uh, in, in VR. And so Wolves in the Walls was created by Oculus Story Studio uh, by Edward Sachi. And one of the very uh, um, uh, first movies that they did, um, I don't remember now the name, but it was about a dinosaur that was looking for its owner. And then it was a three a, th a three minute movie, and then its owner came. It took it, and then it looks looks at you in the eye and it says hi, and then he leaves. So it was kind of a movie that, um, kind of movie that reinforces presence. Okay, you are there, and I can see you. I am a movie character, but I can see you that you are there. But Wolves in the Walls was very different, and that's why it's it's my favorite. In the movie, Lucy, the main character, she's talking to you and she's asking you to do things. Like, for example, she will hand you a camera and then you will take a photo. So there is a problem that they want to solve. Okay. And when the wolves come out of the walls, she, was, she will try to save you. And we're going to see the trailer. Uh, we met in virtual reality. That's an award-winning VR movie. It, it, uh, it was filmed in a VR, in a social VR platform, if you know about VR chat. So this is one of the very famous um, uh, uh, social VR uh, platforms. You play games with people, you go, you hang out in some social worlds. Uh, so uh, this movie was filmed entirely inside of uh, VR chat. Severance Theory was also an immersive theater in VR chat. So the best about social VR movies is, is that you have everything there. So you have thousands of platforms, uh, th sorry, thousands of worlds. So inside of VR chat, I think there are 40,000 worlds because the best thing about, v uh, about social VR platforms is content creation. So the developers in the company, they create some platforms, okay, some worlds, but then they give the people, the tools to create their own worlds. And also they can create their own avatars. And so content creation in VR is very huge. And, um, you know, you will find many people, sorry, many people creating or co-creating worlds in, in VR. There are lots of immersive theater from many different worlds, Germany, UK, Australia, America, Everything, I think most countries they, uh, that um, have uh, teams that are interested in uh, VR storytelling, uh, they do that in, in, um, in many social VR platforms. Also, there are other uh, social VR platforms like Altspace VR, which is much simpler than uh, VR chat, and you can create experiences in, in VR. You can also host you can also record your experience and then host a party where you gather or like an event and then you can gather people around this immersive experience. There is also Engage VR, which is actually edu an educational uh, platform, but also you can record people in their immersive experience. And in instead of showing it to them on a screen, you can actually show it to them as if they are in front of you. You know, as if you are in a bubble and then you're seeing yourself, uh, you know, talking to someone, role playing. And it's it's really great to like this function is, is really great to uh, be in a session and then uh, everybody is recorded. And then you can actually um, like, uh, you know, retrieve the recording and show people uh, the that experience. Uh, Ten shots across the border. It's a 3D a 360 degree experience about the killing of a Mexican 16 year old on the borders between America and Mexico. And this experience actually uh, emphasized presence. And so there were there, there has been lots of arguments. This is one of the most famous 
360 degree experiences and we we consider 360 degree experiences of course as vr and uh, if if anyone from computer science and you have studied unity of course there are uh, ways to create 360 experiences in in unity and um um in in this movie you stand in place of of that boy and then you face the wall that they claimed that the boy was uh, uh, was throwing rocks at the at the patrol and then that's why they killed him and then you will see that the wall is very 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 tall no way that this rock would reach him and so uh, this was uh, this movie was actually by was made by new york times because the the journalists were like Oh no, <laughs> you know if uh, if if I if I keep talking to people about what really happened, uh, that would be useless. Let's just have them experiences in three hundred and sixty degrees, and then this would develop empathy. And that's why there are many people who say, well, you know, VR is the empathy machine. And so whether we agree or disagree, it's worth trying to see uh, what we can do and what is possible in 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 VR. And so uh, this is the um, um, notes on blindness. So I'm not sure if I should share sound or something like Zoom, but let me just uh, see. Oh my God. <clears throat> so can you, can you hear that or? This is classic one, track one. So, so do you hear that? I just stopped the video to make sure that you hear. Yes, I, we can hear it. Yeah, okay. Notes on blindness. And this is the 21st of June, 1983. Sitting in the park. I hear the footsteps of people walking past me on the footpath. So this is how he 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 sees people, and this is how he's transfer, transferring the the experience to us. I don't want to go like you know. I just want to go over these. So this is one of the best movies that I've ever seen in my life, especially in VR. And so when you see um, Lucy going back and forth talking to you, you know this is really great. You heard it too. You do, don't you? Hello. <laughs> but up here in the attic, the sounds were the loudest, especially in the dark. <laughs> So it's, it's you who is holding the magnifier, okay? You're interacting with Lucy. Have to go Let me to show you. Mom. you think there's what in the world? See, when she's, when she's um, holding her hand in the back, you actually use your hand tracker in order to, to hold her hand, and then she's dragging you so that she can go to her mom and then tell her about the photo of the wolves. So it is really great in, in, a, in VR to see how this is going on. And actually, uh, I think here, when she was in the kitchen, I didn't know what am I supposed to do. So she asked me to fill in the jars, the, um, the jam jars, and uh, I'm not sure where it's now, but I, I was supposed to fill something and I didn't know why I was doing this. And then I realized that every time I fill the jar of jam and I put it on the counter, the wolves come and then they eat it. So it was really interesting, an interesting discovery to see how this happens in VR and how, how I'm also involved as uh, I have a role in that movie. Everybody who watched this movie, they had a role in this movie. Um, yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't want to spend much time on severance theory, but in severance theory, it's uh, it's it's kind of a different experience. It's on VR chat, and um, you can participate as Alex or as audience. 
I actually preferred to be the audience because I wanted to explore the, the, the area. And it's, it's really interesting to hear the father and the mother talking about their son. And then the mother, she had cancer and she had to leave her, her son for a year with her sister. And then you, you, you're reading all these memories about, uh, about Alex. And then you're going upstairs with them. You're going downstairs with them and you're looking at his drawings and you're going to his bedroom. So it's not like a passive experience in VR. It's really, you are there with the actors, like, uh, you know, those experiences in real life sleep no more. Uh, so that happens in real life, but you do, you do not exist. Like you can see them, but they can't see you. So it's really interesting. Oh, sorry. I just need to uh, go over this. So most of the stories, they actually focus on the hero's journey. So there is a dilemma and, uh, you know, um, there is um, some kind of transformation in the end and some atonement and return and there is a gift and everybody is happy, but there's also branching narrative, which could be possible in, in VR. As you can see, this is some kind of branching narrative. If you ever uh, read uh, Ryan North's or um, played any of the text adventures, uh, text adventure games. So basically it starts with an introduction to the story and then different paths or maybe two paths. Okay, and then you, you try to discover this path. And actually, although you have many paths, but it could branch out to kind of maybe two choices uh, and then it may have different endings. So uh, this is kind of uh, choose your own adventure. And uh, one of the best uh, stories that I ever read is To Be or Not To Be for Ryan North, in which he hated, like most people, I hate Hamlet. And so uh, he he made he made many differences. Uh, like Hamlet was transformed into be or, or not to be. Uh, even Ophelia, she didn't die. She was she was a scientist. Sometimes she was a researcher or a businesswoman. Uh, and 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 you know this is really interesting to see how this can evolve in uh, in VR. And so yeah. So today we're going to talk about a doll's house and. Um, I think I should invite you now to, um, I'm going to send you the link. Uh, well, let me just uh, go through uh, frame VR and then I'm going to send you, send you the link. So uh, this is, um, this was meant uh, for uh, immersive uh, theater but some kind of a reflective <laughs> type of storytelling where we look at gender roles, uh, the, some of the symbols in, um, in a doll's house. And the, this is the first scene. And the, this video uh, just talks about the, the story of, um, of Nora Helmer and, uh, and her husband. And so as you can see here, uh, in this, of course, uh, I built this fra this uh, frame from scratch. I put all these um, um, walls and uh, and also, um, you know, these three D objects, the carpet and everything. And then once you get into the introduction, so it tells the the story in brief uh, about Nora. Um, she, of course, uh, she had to. Um, uh, like uh, forge her father's signature in order to get a loan and um, and then you know some problems happen in the end and then she left uh, her house and children and that was in the 19th century so what I did before was just um, to click on oops Yeah, so once the students or once the um, viewers uh, go into the scene, it's just an introductory scene and there can be many, many scenes, okay? We can go for scene two, which displays more 3D objects, uh, more metaphors actually in, in, the, um, in the play. So the lark, so this is not a lark, but <laughs> this was the only animated object that I found and the revolving door 
and it's a dead end and um the house uh this is also the living room so in her house and the one of the things that were salient in the in the play was the macarons so we talk about these uh, images and metaphors and then um yeah so and then once we finish we teleport into another area so uh it's very easy to create an immersive experience in uh, frame vr as you can see this is edit mode if i want to delete this i'm not going to delete it uh you can also change the rotation um okay oh this is the bank so what's wrong oh i'm on edit mode yeah lock position i'm not gonna lock position and so if i want to scale it if i want to yeah or if i want to rotate it you can do that instead of just oh okay i'm gonna lock position now if you want to add um any 3d objects um you can add images 360 photos even you can create 360 photos and make them as a sphere and this sphere will be your environment uh 360 videos pdf video and also 3d models and the 3d models you can create your own 3d models but you have it here handy it's wrong oh uh, so this is where you get your library and then let's say doll. And then you have these objects. You can actually, yeah, I need to log in. So this is Sketchfab. Because I, yeah. And then you can import it, add it. Uh, optimization is very important in VR, uh, which is different from other platforms because actually you can be in this uh, platform with your headset. And uh, sometimes it takes time because what it does is decimation. And decimation means that you're, you're, you're actually taking away some layers uh, so that it can be rendered in, um, in VR. So rendering means that people can see it. So if you have lots of objects in VR, the, the headset can't be able to render the images, okay, to make them seeable. Okay, so I'd love to invite everyone to this space. So please, please uh, come in because we're, I'm going to take you to another, another uh, space. Okay. So, oh, yeah, I need to... So I sent the link. Is anyone here yet? Yeah, I'm trying to join right now. Okay. So in Frame VR, you have three frames for free, and I think endless scene, scenes, but um, the you know the one of the weak like the um, like one of the disadvantages of frame VR is that if one of the audience clicked on scene two, everybody will go to scene two, and and this is a problem. So one of the you know because it's free, so they, they need to force you to pay in order to have uh, like everybody can have their own experience. But uh, there are lots of solutions that you can do. Uh, you can actually, um, if you have a team, each team will have their own uh, frames. And then you can actually have the main frame that has all the links. And this can be actually uh, more of a narrative adventure in which um, every member or every, uh, every person in the audience can click on one part of the story or a different part of the story, and then they can explore it on their way, where probably they can see one of the actors. So one frame can be the living room, one frame can be, uh, for example, the backyard, 
one frame can be for example the office and then they can explore the the life of you know or a story of of a certain person so instead of and then they can come together and talk about their experience so this can be some kind of a narrative branching in uh, so maybe you can trace or you can see what are the options if um a doll's house uh, if nora was in the 21st century for example or if nora uh, didn't leave her kids okay so you can have different um branching narratives and different frames about nora in which audiences can fly or can teleport from here to there and then they can see the life of nora so is anyone here yet you can just you don't need to register the most interesting thing about uh, frame vr is that you don't need to register joint okay so I where guess. are you me too. <laughs> Why I can't see you? Did you click on spectator or uh, participant? Okay, so I'll tell you something. I'm going to go to scene two. And then I guess, yeah, I put this uh, squid game by mistake and I didn't. S squid game doll. <laughs> uh, yeah, if you can see, this is the tarantula. And the tarantula had the significance in the story. So I, I found the more one that is animated. And I think, no. So I, I have hidden um, a teleporter, um, yeah, a portal, a portal here. Let me think, so it's on the other side. There are also lots of uh, like terminology so you can actually create different spawning points in vr which means that in vr when you teleport to a place if you ever had this before in oculus or in other headset you feel like you're standing inside someone or inside many people because this is the spawning point and so then you separate so many vr platforms they create diff you can actually a user can create different spawning points so someone can spawn from the left, spawn from the right. So we're going to go now to another frame. It's a multi-user frame, okay, that I created for everyone. <clears throat> I called it the sandbox. And please, please uh, join me there. So I think I'm going to be able uh, to see you here. So it's called sandbox. Okay. And so let's enjoy the nature. <laughs> so it's really beautiful. This is one of the frames. Yeah, I think someone joined. Okay, very, very good. Maybe we can take a selfie or something. <laughs> so I can, I'm gonna change the frame just to show you how it looks like, how it, how it looks like. And Yeah, so we are in the island. I can actually change it into Serenity Garden. So we are in a garden now. Okay. And so all of this is for free. Okay. We are now in a convention center. And this one is actually good for co-creation. It's very big. You can create your own stuff. Okay. Um, this one, I love this one because you can have different. So there was a school in Australia. It was like five, uh, five, fifth graders, like uh, kids who have nine, nine years old. So they were showcasing their, uh, their VR creations in any, in, uh, in many of these rooms. Oh, I left this sofa. <laughs> yeah. And one of the interesting things is that you can actually create different immersive experiences and no one can hear you. So this area is called a private audio area. And so if you go inside and you talk to people, no one can hear you uh, unless they go inside this area as well. And so it's really interesting that you can also create stuff. You can put some 3D objects, uh, some, some photos, about your immersive experience. And then visitors can go from each private area 
uh, and uh, and see what's happening, what what's the story is about, what are the actors interacting about. So this is called the Zen office. Uh, yeah, I love this. Uh, so XR women, they actually used one. They used this, the neon hall, in order to create their XR museum. So maybe we can have PSU museum in VR. Uh, some of the things that were created, maybe presentations. So what they did is that they put uh, screenshots of all the presentations that took place in XR women since they founded it. And it's, it's really cool that um, uh, you know you can use a place like that to create your own uh, museum, but there can also be lots of ideas um, to create your own immersive experience. You can also create immersive storytelling here, people going from one frame to another, uh, from let's say the, it started in the island and then it ended in the neon hall. So it's really interesting, yeah. There's also a cool thing about the chat. Yeah, you are robots, but <laughs> I think you can change your... Uh... So this was actually one of the things that uh, started in VR is that once you join as a guest, you, you, you become a robot and then you can change your avatar. And, uh, you know, because, you know, people talk about racism and stuff. So if you made a white or whatever, so this, they, you start as a robot and then you can change your avatar the way you like it. And so uh, Alt Space VR in the past, people used to be uh, uh, robots and then they changed their avatars. But now it's it's different. So yeah, it's really, it's really fun. One of the best things about VR platforms is accessibility. So you see here, translate. You can also uh, uh, choose the language. Let's say that you, you want to attend um a concert or a movie in yeah in yeah but the thing is it's only in the chat uh so you wanted to, to talk to people in a language uh they understand and uh, and so and then they will answer you in the language that you understand but this is all only through chatting in i think in alt space vr this happened like a year ago there has been accessibility um options in alt space vr i'm not sure if it discontinue but I think it's it's still there where actually the presenter or the performer is speaking in a language you don't understand and then you go to the settings and then you click translation accessibility you click the language and then they start it starts you see the language so it, it uses text-to-speech sentences synthesis and then they kind of translate the uh the presenter's uh, speech which is which is really uh, cool um yeah let me see if there are other oh there is the resort let's go there <clears throat> so there are many options and many possibilities <laughs> yeah the sofa is still there so whatever you create <laughs> will still be there until you you delete it um yeah so yeah, you can actually create anything. So um, I'm, I'm going to show you. I think I showed you before. So you just go to inventory and then add to inventory and then add 3D model and then browse library. So you have to have an account in, in uh, Sketchfab. So Sketchfab is one of the best um one of the best platforms that um they have 3d objects and also sometimes they sell but uh, so you can have 3d objects for free in your uh, vr experience and uh, you can start creating things you can start meshing things so one of the experiences that i created but i had to delete because uh, i don't know it was bandwidth or something uh, that I, uh, I i created the first experience for uh uh, for a doll's house and I wanted to, to say that she was caged so I put a cage a 3d cage and then I put a, a heart inside it so this is called meshing so you you merge or you kind of combine certain meshes together in order to create something different and uh, yeah so it could be this oh I have to log in again 
um yeah so i am signing into or signing up for sketchfab doesn't take much time uh sometimes it, it might allow me not to um not to optimize you can also share the screen in vr you can also um have a projector or a screen where you can like the one that i used in the uh, those house uh frame yeah it uh, it takes time if it's optimizing it takes time because in vr it depends on the vertices or the faces of the vr object so if it has lots of faces and you need to 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 render in vr and people will be able to see it 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 has to uh, have less poly okay low poly and so optimizing means that they are trying to optimize it for vr so it might take some time and it might not load <laughs> so this is just <laughs> to tell you that we might wait for the model or it might not load so yeah i might uh, see something else so please um yeah try to um play here and uh just add some stuff it, it doesn't it doesn't have to be uh, a 3d object it can be anything it can be a pdf uh, it can be uh, a video uh, a 360 video a photo an image okay so you can create your own stuff because this is really cool the what i love about vr is co-creation so people can create their own experiences and they can see it, they can interact with it which is really cool and frame vr is a very simple uh you know uh platform where you can actually use ready-made uh, experiences or you can use an empty one so let me show you so when you when you can use an empty one you can uh, create your own experiences or you can start so where is it so this is an empty <clears throat> yeah but we have the <laughs> we still have the sofa so um yeah so this is an empty uh, environment where you can actually create your own experience yeah uh because i have the stop sharing uh, yeah i think yeah you can have the emojis so you can have you can click so you know that still now in vr we can't show our facial expressions so if somebody is saying something you can click if you don't understand you can click the smiley face if they said something interesting uh yeah let's go to the gallery oh, so this is a gallery <laughs> okay so yeah yeah i don't think it's uh, yeah sometimes some some vr environments uh, they are not fancy because you need to yeah they want you to put stuff and they do not want to yeah this is similar if you are interested, I can also take you to Verbella uh, campus. It's another campus, and it's also for immersive storytelling, immersive education. We can have a tour there, um, and uh, we can explore. And uh, it's also fun, more fun than Frame. Um, yeah. So these are offices. And uh, I'm not sure if this is also private. No, this is not a private space. And so it's it's really cool having these uh, these places. So it's this is called Team Suite. So let's say that you're gonna, um, yeah, somebody added an asset. This is really cool. Who is that? They didn't say who. <laughs> but I would be happy if you tell me who added an asset so an asset it could be a 3d object could be an image <clears throat> yeah yeah so yeah one day i took my students to mozilla hubs and uh, that was during covid 19 so they didn't go anywhere and they were crying and then i took them to mozilla hubs and they were kind of you know they were out of the cage so they were like set free 
and they were running everywhere. Mozilla Hubs is also re is, is very cool. And it's it's really interesting to to create an immersive experience in Mozilla Hubs. It I don't think it, it doesn't require coding. Uh, you can easily use uh, spoke and uh, it's it's like um, an engine and then you can create and upload uh, worlds there yeah so i think i should uh, stop sharing and then uh yeah um if you have any questions if you have any uh questions please don't hesitate to ask um yeah, I'd love to hear your ideas. Uh, what can we do in in Frame VR? Uh, what could be the possible uh, stories um, and immersive experiences uh, from your own perspective? <clears throat> I have one question, please. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Uh, are we gonna have uh, some more sessions? some more meetings uh yeah sure hopefully <laughs> yeah i would love to have more sessions and i'd love to know your ideas about frame vr and if you want to explore other um other platforms of course yeah i would love to be invited again sure <laughs> can i uh, can i answer that question because yes the whole idea behind uh, creating the digital filmmaking experiences uh, is to have this learning uh, community together. So we are offering a series of workshops. We have started uh, last week, and this one is uh, an amazing, uh, of course, uh, experience. I'm sure everybody is really interested to learn more about this. This is just an introduction, of course. Uh, I think we need more, Miss I mean, yes. Let me just extend an official uh, invitation here that we can, uh, if, if you would give us some more about uh, the creation of such platforms, that would be definitely great. Uh, we also have in store uh, how to use uh, our, eye, our phones, how to use our phones in filmmaking. So you see, we are getting you into the very technical aspect of movie making and the very simple that is, uh, as Ms. Amani is saying, that is made accessible uh, by the uh, ease of technology that we have or enjoy nowadays. All right, thanks for the clarification. Yeah, thank you. It would be a great honor, of course, to proceed with more sessions. But I'd love uh, to hear from you what you what you want to learn, uh, what kind of platforms you want to explore. So that would be, you know, much easier for me to to focus on uh, for other sessions in the future. Uh, and I would love to hear from you uh, about your experience today and uh, your ideas of how this can be uh, used for immersive experiences. All right. Well, uh, I'm actually a beginner, so I don't have much of ideas, but uh, I'll just say we learn from you. Yeah, thank you. No worries. <laughs> we are all beginners somehow. <laughs> we learn from each other, and uh, I might know some in, in terms of VR storytelling. Others might know uh, other information in terms of uh, filming. So I took some filming in VR, but I'm not that technical, like using um, OBS. Um, yeah, so it, it would be interesting to use some kind of um, uh, of, uh, of tools in, in filmmaking. And of course, in VR, you can also cast your uh your vr experience to facebook and also to other uh, platforms so there are many ways in terms of filming in, in vr yes i see abdullah uh, raised his hand yes i i want to ask you a question about two problems that i think it's facing the vr industry and the filmmaking and one of these is uh, we, you know, that the VR uh, have been with us for many years. 
-hmm. and it's a technology that it's very slowly developing so uh but it's still expensive for any person to buy a vr set i mean mm -hmm. especially for the pc type or uh, but the, for the phones you can see a lot of low prices but uh, this is one of the issues of the vr i think is the is how expensive it is just to purchase one VR headset, you know. And the second question I have is, when you know when in movies, the director have a role in adjusting the light and selective focus and all of that, just so everyone can have the same feeling and live the same moment. But I think in the VR, you could only do that in the uh, like uh, cartoon making but in a real like movie making, non-fictional movies or even fictional, but real, real one, is uh, it's gonna be really hard to make the public, make it, uh, uh, the people who are watching the movie to focus on the story, you know, because everyone will be looking at something at certain event. So these are my two questions. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, these are really great questions. And uh, yeah, I understand that the, the expenses are, are really high. And um, uh, but I think because uh, Mark Zuckerberg has announced, <laughs> yeah, uh, the, he wanted to hijack the term metaverse. Uh, so probably in the future, the VR headsets would be um, like less expensive in the future. Because with the with the VR headset, you, this is this is when you when you have full immersion and full presence in um, in the experience. But I've seen many people uh, transfer to WebXR, uh, which is kind of also an interesting experience to play. It's like uh, as if you are playing a three D game, and they had the different experiences as well. In terms of uh, cartoons and stuff, uh, there has been some movies. Uh, we're actually well. It depends on what you want the the uh, the, the the user to see. There are thousands of examples actually. Every year, Cannes uh, Festival, uh, Tribeca Film Festival, they have um, many movies, many VR and AR experiences, and so um, it depends uh, because when you create a VR movie, you actually put yourself in the in the user's experience and you try to see okay so how would they see this how would they you know so in in the immersive experience in vr chat we were actually hearing the um the actors and alex so the father and the mother but we were also looking at the same time so we were not far away from them we were looking at the uh, the notes or the the alex's uh, diaries uh, they were like bubbles everywhere in the living room. And then once they go upstairs, we follow them and we go upstairs. And then it, it uh, actually, when, whenever you create a movie, even the regular movies, you, you, you make what we know user testing. And so you, you test the users and you get feedback from the users and then you change your experience into something that is, and this is actually what happened in Wolves and the Walls and many other movies. So in Wolves and the Walls, they were actually had this dilemma. So we uh, we know that we made many movies in which the user was uh, was present. So whether Henry, <clears throat> Henry or the other movies, Angelica. So they were very successful in that. But they said, now we need to create a movie in which not only the user is present, but the user is interacting with with a character, with a virtual being. And that's why uh, they came up with this sum, the virtual being summit and all of the, these things. So it's, it's, it's still, I know that it's still in the beginning and, um, but many, many people are doing uh, great things and uh, using VR or even AR experiences. And um, yeah, I think in the future, uh, there, there will be lots of affordances, by the way, uh, VR is not um, is not developing slowly. It's actually 
it's it's really it's developing very fast especially in the last two years with the help of uh, artificial intelligence but the problem is that the, the 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 devices are very very expensive especially microsoft hololens for example it's between three thousand to five thousand dollars which is really expensive and they use this for for companies and uh and other and other institutions but of course i i know that the problem is actually is in the head mounted display and the, they are trying to improve improve it and improve the experience and make it affordable to people so yeah i acknowledge your your concerns about this and um i advise you to follow uh, tribeca film festival sundance film festival and the can film festival because there are lots of amazing experiences in VR, uh, whether using cartoons or using people. They're also, they merge sometimes between reality and virtual reality and see what people uh, think. Also Disney, now they started uh, a, a patent for augmented reality. So you see things, or I think virtual reality where you see things without uh, a VR headset. So yeah, so I think the, the, the medium is very rich but also in order for it to be accessible to many people, it will take some time.